Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sun, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about blood sugar markers that will tell us if we have prediabetes, diabetes, or metabolic syndrome, okay, or even diabetes when it's advanced. Last week, or in the last video, we spoke about the different signs and symptoms, right? How does a patient present? What is their lifestyle? What are their dietary changes that affect diabetes or prediabetes? Today, we're going to talk about the different markers that you can actually get from routine blood work to determine if you have insulin resistance, prediabetes, or diabetes, okay? So, elevated blood sugar, okay? Blood glucose biomarkers. When your sugar starts to elevate, one of the first signs that you have insulin resistance, right? Early signs is that your blood sugar, your fasting sugar is above 100. Your fasting blood sugar. So what that means is between a 10 and a 12 hour fast, and then you take your first thing in the morning after drinking some water. And then you'll notice that your triglycerides will start to creep up. Triglycerides will start to creep up and it'll go, go above 100. Okay, that is your first earliest sign. Now there's ad additional like advanced testing that might help us determine that when glucose seems normal and triglycerides seems normal, but you suspect that someone has insulin resistance. So a test marker called C-peptide or fasting uh, insulin can be helpful in determining if we have early insulin resistance, okay? Now, as we go from here and go into that definitive insulin resistance, we get into what we call metabolic syndrome, right? When we get into metabolic syndrome, we get to get central adiposity or fat around the waist, right? You're getting fatigued and you're getting these signs and symptoms, right? You crave uh, sugars and so forth. Blood sugar in the fasting state will be 100 to 127, first thing in the morning. And then your triglycerides will start to creep up, okay? Cholesterol will be above 200, maybe 220, 240, 250. But these numbers, when you break down cholesterol, LDL and HDL will go in the opposite direction. So LDL will start to go up, maybe above 100. And HDLs will go below maybe 40. Okay, so when we have skewing of these numbers, then we have to suspect we have metabolic syndrome. Other markers like uric acid. So what's uric acid? Uric acid is what causes gout, right? Where you get the inflammation of the toe. So uric acid will also climb with high blood sugar. And then a real uh, telltale sign is that your triglyceride number is higher than your total cholesterol number. If you have these, all these markers in here, then we are suspecting that you may have um, metabolic syndrome. These people will start to have issues uh, with how the, the liver clears out, how their kidney clears out, and so forth. So this is a much more serious state when you have these types of numbers than over here. Here you can easily reverse. Here it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort on the patient's part to get better, okay? And then finally, when you get diabetes, your blood sugar, your fasting sugar is 126 or higher. And then something called hemoglobin A1C, right? Um, glycated hemoglobin is 6.5 and higher. When we get into this stage, we're causing a lot of damage. A lot of damage to your blood vessels, right? Your kidneys, peripheral ver nerves uh, because of circulatory issues, glycation or basically sugars attaching uh, to different proteins and fats will start to damage um, vasculature and nerve tissue. One of the leading causes of neuropathy or peripheral neuropathy is diabetes, right? And they have a bunch of different medications that help treat the symptoms of the numbness and tingling or burning in the feet. But in terms of getting to the root cause for diabetes, right, and reversing diabetes, takes a lot of effort and time on the patient's part. It's commitment to 
a strict dietary change in nutraceuticals. And then not just going and saying, I'm going to exercise more and eat less. Because when you start getting into this phase or this phase, exercise hurts, right? You exercise a lot today, tomorrow you have a hard time getting out of bed. Everything hurts. And that pain may last rather than one or two days, it might go four, five, six, seven days, right? Because what you do is you, when you exercise, you cause inflammation in these types of patients. So moderation in exercise in the beginning is important, not over-exercising. And then just dropping uh, calories may be detrimental for some people just because um, they just don't have the energy, right? Fatigue will set in and they just don't have the drive and motivation to do this type of stuff. So it's very important to look at these types of markers, right? Glucose, triglyceride, cholesterol, um, and hemoglobin A1C. This is just your routine blood work and it tells you a lot about a person. So when you have suspicion and you have all these signs and symptoms, if you went back to the last video, look at the signs and symptoms of someone having insulin resistance or diabetes, and then run these tests. Ask your doctor to run the tests. And you start to see these numbers change, and then you know you're heading down the wrong road, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.